Uh, thank you, Daniela, and thank you, everyone, for coming. And I know uh, Daniela is being very kind with co-chair, but uh, I would say that 99% of this work was uh, in bringing everyone together today is uh, is due to Daniela. So, and so, thank you so much for for convening such a unique and beautiful symposium. Thank you, Daniela. This is, um, I mean, this is like a, one of the more interesting, odd conferences I've been to, because it's, uh, it's sort of like a hybrid uh, uh, science slash uh, memorial for Roger, and I think Roger would have loved this, um, having something different, um, having something that's uh, not necessarily been a mold for. Oh, okay, I got it. Am I stepping on something? So just to, just to kind of go back, um, in terms of, uh, I've only known Roger since around 2017, 2018, um, through people in the room here, through uh, Mark and Becky, that uh, introduced uh, introduced me to Roger when he was in um, when he was in New Zealand. And um, at the time, um, Roger and I really f feel a similarity that we kind of came to to Wales, uh, not necessarily in the beginning of our career, maybe towards the middle of our career, where where Wales just sort of appeared for us, and um, Roger was looking at owls and bats and thinking of echolocation, but once the, the whales appeared in his life, they, they, really, you know, they really took hold, and it was like everything else faded away and whales became the, the centerpiece, and, and I feel that that same thing has happened to me. Um, I was doing bioluminescence and microbiology and corals and sharks, but um, once whales have come into my life, uh, they've really taken front and center. And um, so Roger and I really shared that, um, that, uh, that idea of um, what whales represent, you know, and I think uh, this room is a perfect testament. They represent, you know, connectivity. Um, whales represent, like, magic. They're these animals, the biggest animals that have ever existed as far as we know in the universe. They're still here, bigger than any dinosaurs. They have this subset like when I'm sure when Roger was doing owls or when I'm doing microbes, like when I'm trying to get people interested in microbes, I can get the microbiology department and a few other people. But when you talk about whales, like they, they, they reach everybody, you know, they really reach everyone. And, um, and, and I think that's what's so beautiful about it. And, and the other thing that Roger really, and I shared and that, that I think is so important is even this introduction with, Paul Winter, um, and, um, and the musicality to this, um, and bringing the musicality to this with the, with the work of, of Katie in the beginning of, of drawing in from, from the, the, the fields of, of seemingly unrelated fields, but yet they are related, and everything is related, and everything is connected, and everything has DNA. So, um, you know, Roger's best friend being, being Cormac McCarthy, that he hung out with, uh, with, uh, with artists and he kind of, uh, and writers and really felt the importance of that. And I think that's something that we, we're really trying to bring to, to SETI as we move forward. We're, we're hoping to create a SETI arts. I'm wearing one of our first uh, fashion designer t-shirts of Listen to the Whale campaign, um, where there was some dissension whether we, was, we were gonna use a sperm whale because our focus is sperm whales. But Roger's love, as we all know, is, is uh, the humpback whale. Um, Roger and I love to kid together. We would disagree. Like, uh, I can't tell you how many times Roger tried to convince me, and we all know how persuasive he could be. Um, are you sure you don't want to try humpback whales? You know, and, you know, and they, they, you know, I think, you know, maybe they might be a little better than the sperm whales, but, but um, anyway, so his love, his heart, as we all know, was really with the humpback whale, but. Um, he was able to kind of come over and see why we were doing sperm whales, and he did change. Um, and he was such a supporter of SETI um, for, 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 from the very beginning, before it just started as an idea, and, um, and then introduced us into, into Shane, and then I feel like meeting Peter Tyak here the other day, just like everyone's names. He created this huge web, and the web was really about community, and, and love, you know, and even, even Daniela through the, through the MacArthur, um, there's other MacArthur fellows in here called Safina. Um, so it really kind of, when he would reach people, he'd kind of draw you into his world and march along. And, you know, there's the passion that he brought to the, 
to the songs of the humpback whales. He was just telling me how he would, you know, how he got it, how he got the album made, and how he went to his friend that was an academic print, and how much care he put into the listening instructions that went along with it, so people listened to it in the right way, and going around and marching around to to put the headphones on on various people's heads until they started incorporating it into their work, into Star Trek, into Kate Bush, into the Beatles. Um, so all this is just really important, and um, these are some real lessons to, to think about as we, as we kind of continue. I never want to kind of recreate something, like even Roger and I were, were uh, talking with Andrew Yen um, on, the, on the golden record and you know, asking like, what would a golden record look like today? But we kind of realized, no, we don't want to create a part two of something. We want to create the new version. Um, and Roger was really into that, you know, of like imagining with us that what this could look like. So we're in the really early days right now of, uh, even though we started this with a meeting in 2019 and many people were in the room um, where we kind of envisioned what, what said he would look like and a kind of stroke of luck hit us with some funding to start this. And, but then really it's convened together a group and we keep hoping to expand this out as we even open up our open data community as to make this like very cohesive, very inclusive. And um, yeah, those are just some of my thoughts. And I know Roger, he's kind of, if he's here, he's here with us, he would, he'd be so happy to see this convergence of people um, that, that came together today in, in his honor. Um, yeah, he would, uh, he would have a big belly laugh and he would probably yell at me for why am I only wearing a t-shirt um, because Roger was, you know, old fashioned and he would have had, a, you know, he would have been dressed to, with his typical fare. But I want to show one movie that we were working on um, that we did show. It's just about a minute of this, just to give a, just to bring Roger's voice in, um, if we could tee that up. So um, in thinking about drones and thinking about the ideas of this, this was just um, when we held our first meeting in 2019, um, he wanted to share this with everyone. And I'm not gonna show the full thing, it goes on for a while, but I, I just wanted to share his voice and his, uh, his way of thinking of where, this is an escort swap. Um, so two whale, um, a whale, a male whale and a female, and then one of the other, it doesn't look like much when you're just watching it, but actually another male comes in and swaps out and pushes the other male away. Um, and, um, and you could see this as gross pup, but getting into the idea of the slowness of the world of the whales. And what he did is he kind of went through and he sped this up two, three, four fold. So it's actually more apparent to our human eyes. Um, we sat for like, you know, for several days, just, um, just making this video together. I'm just gonna show the first minute and then I'll put this on. Um, I, I guess there was somebody who gave him the footage that he told me I shouldn't put it online, but I think we should not care about that anymore and I'll probably put it online after this. So we'll just tee up the, the first minute. This sequence is drone footage of two male humpback whales plus a female and her calf. You'll see them in a moment. It was taken near a South Pacific atoll and it's shown at normal speed, not in slow motion. I'll describe what's going on shortly, but have a go at figuring it out yourself, though please don't share your conclusions yet. The smaller whale that just blew is the female's male escort. He has dark flippers. The larger whale coming up from behind has white tips on his flippers, so I'll call him white tips and the smaller male, small male. We'll, we'll put the rest up. This goes on, and it's a really beautiful sequence, really trying to show the slowness of the world of the whale and trying to get the view of the, the whale from their perspective. Um, and, uh, you know, in one sense, thinking about the whale's heartbeat, um, Joseph here from, from CSAIL, um, we're working on a, ta on a sensor that could record the, the heartbeat. And on our last trip to Dominica, two pieces of magic happened. One, we witnessed a, a whale being born, a sperm whale being born, which how Whitehead had, had um, with the last one was from, from, I think it was 1986, or when he published it at least. Um, and the other thing that happened was that um, we recorded a heartbeat from a, a whale, which um, from Unit R, which Shane, Shane has known for, for many years as a Roger. So um, we heard, heard a heartbeat from Roger. And um, anyway, I'm really glad to share with you and, and, um, and, and continue sharing today on, on Roger. Thank you. <laughs> 